Hajim Baek at Gyeongsang National University Changwon Hospital in South Korea. I'd like to share with you today some highlights relating to our paper that's coming out shortly in AJR entitled Automated Brain Volumetry in Patients with Memory Impairment Comparison of Conventional and Ultrafast 3D T1 Weighted MRI Sequences Using Two Software Packages Brain volumetry is widely performed in clinical practice for evaluating various neurologic diseases such as neurodegenerative or the myelinating disease. 3D T1 weighted imaging is uh, used for quantitative brain volume measurement, but high resolution isotropic T1 weighted images usually requires a longer scan time. Recently, Novak et al. developed a novel sequence requiring 30 seconds of scan time for rapid acquisition of isotropic T1 weighted imaging using a fast FRS the multi shot 3D EPI sequence. So, acquisition times may be greatly shortened using this novel ultra fast 3D EPI sequence. So, in this study, we compared the automated brain volume measurement between conventional and ultra fast 3D T1 weighted imaging using the two different volumetric software packages. This retrospective study included 36 patients with memory impairment who underwent this retestular brain MRI examination, including both ultrafast and conventional 3D T1 weighted imaging in the same imaging session. Here are the technical details of both ultrafast and conventional 3D T1 weighted images. Automated brain volumetry was performed using Euroquant and FreeSoftware software. Volumetric measurement was compared between the sequences for nine regions in each hemisphere of the brain. We performed the following statistical analysis in the slides, as you can see. Here are the brief results of our study. Well, volume just shows a substantial to almost perfect agreement between the two different T1 sequences for most reasons bilaterally. However, most reasons demonstrated a significant dif mean differences between the two different 3D T1 weighted sequences, and blend alternate analysis demonstrated consistent systemic biases and wide limits of agreement. This table shows the comparison of volumes between the two different 3D T1 weighted images using Euroquant software. This table provides agreement of volume measurement between the two different 3D T1 weighted imaging using Euroquant software. Table 3 shows comparison of volumes between the two different 3D T1 weighted imaging using Presuffer software. Here is another, soft, uh, here is another table uh, uh, for summarizing the agreement of volume measurement between the two different 3D T1 weighted imaging using Presuffer software. The final table shows agreement of volume measurement between Euroquant and free software software stratified by sequences. Here is the representative color-coded actual MR images at the level of basal ganglia in patients with a subjective cognitive impairment. Upper low images uh, displays conventional 3D T1 sequence, and low row displays ultra fast 3D EPI T1 sequences with segmentation by Eurocount in the middle column and free supper in the uh, right column. Pallidum's uh, marking asterisk appears larger for free supper in figure C and F than for Neurocount in the figure B and E, but appears similar in size between the two different sequences for each software package. For both software packages, bilateral frontal and occipital cortices in figure B and C at bone tissue interface appears more color-coded for the conventional than for ultra-fast sequence contributing to 
larger occultic, occultical gray matter for the conventional sequence. Here is another representative images of the two different 3D T1 sequences of the brain in patients with mild cognitive impairment. Upper row images display ultra-fast 3D EPI T1 weighted sequence and lower row displays conventional 3D T1 weighted sequence. Susceptibility artifact on the ultra-fast sequence manifested as a signal file up in both prior occipital lobes at bone tissue interface in the figure A and B, and both interior frontal lobes at air tissue interface in figure C and D. This issue might be related to the significantly low, lower volume of cortical gray matter for the ultra-fast sequence than for the conventional sequence as well as large effect size for both software packages. Here is a, a summary statement. In conclusion, ultra-fast 3D EPI T1 weighted imaging may be useful to enable brain volumetry in patients with severe motion artifact recalls use of conventional sequence. However, Brain volume measurement showed a significant difference and systemic biases between the conventional and ultra-fast sequences. Therefore, the current conventional 3D T1 weighted sequence remains preferred in patients with patients who can tolerate the standard examination. This study had a several limitations. First, the study included a small and heterogeneous sample introducing selection bias. Second, uh, the study was retrospective study, so we did not perform scan risk and experiments for each of the two different sequences to compare the sequences in terms of intra and individual variability. Third, no reference standard was available for true volumes of the various anatomical lesions of the brain. First, volumes from the two different sequences were not compared in terms of impact on clinical decision making and the clinical importance of the observed variation between the two different sequences is unknown. Last, the ultra-fast 3D EPI T1 weighted sequence remains under development and is not commercially available at present. Thank you for listening.